This lesson deals with sinusoidal frequency response and a low-pass filter. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 6 starting on page 1. The sinusoidal frequency response, or we just say frequency response, of a circuit provides a measure of how the amplitude and phase of our voltages and currents will change with frequency. This is really useful because any periodic waveform can be written as a sum of sinusoidal signals. For example, the Fourier series of a square wave is the following formula. And you can find this formula in your calculus book. It's a summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 v sub p over n pi, where v sub p is the peak value of the square wave, times the quantity 1 minus the cosine of n pi, times the sine of 2 pi n f t. Let me evaluate the equation for you. Suppose that v sub p is equal to 2 and f is equal to 1 kilohertz. For n is equal to 1, we would have 2 times 2 divided by 1 pi, and then the cosine of 1 times pi is the cosine of 180, which is minus 1, I get a 2 from that. That gives me an 8 divided by pi times the sine of 2 pi, 1, times 1k, times t. For n equals 2, I get the cosine of 2 pi, which is equal to 1, and that makes this term 0. That term drops out. When n is equal to 3, I get this term. 4 goes to 0, 5 is this term, 6 goes to 0, and so on down the line. Let me make some comments about terminology. The 1 kilohertz signal here is referred to as the fundamental frequency. This was the frequency of the square wave we were looking at. The 3 kilohertz is referred to as the third harmonic, 5 kilohertz the fifth harmonic, the seventh harmonic, the ninth harmonic, the eleventh harmonic, the thirteenth harmonic. What's interesting here is this square wave has only odd harmonics. This is not true of all periodic waveforms, but just of a square wave. This idea is actually used in distortion guitar pedals, where you play a note, and it chops off the top and bottom and creates a square wave. So the note that you're playing, you create odd order harmonics, and the higher harmonics are associated with the screeching kind of sounds. Let me next evaluate these leading coefficients with the sine waves. The first term was 2.546, this is 8 over pi, times the sine of 2 pi 1 kt. The second term is 0.849, a little bit smaller. The third term, a little bit smaller, and so on down the line. So they're getting progressively smaller. Even though the series is infinite, you can see here the first few terms dominate the summation. If our circuit's linear, we could treat V sub S as a sum of voltage sources and apply superposition. Thus, knowing how our circuit responds to various frequencies will allow us to predict the response of our circuit. Let's look at this RC circuit in the frequency domain. I've got a phaser input, I've got a phaser output. Voltage across here is just a voltage divider, since this current is the same as this one. It's going to be the impedance of the capacitor, which is 1 over j omega c, over the sum of the two, which is r plus 1 over j omega c. I'm going to bring the V sub s over here and multiply numerator and denominator by j omega c. So I get a 1, I get j omega c times r, and then this times j omega c is just equal to 1. We call this ratio a transfer function of our circuit. And the reason we do this is that if we were to double the input, we double the output, so the ratio stays the same one of the properties of linear circuits. Now this is going to change with frequency, and obviously it's a complex number, so it has a magnitude and has an angle versus omega. Let's find the magnitude of our transfer function. The numerator is just equal to 1, so its magnitude is equal to 1, and the denominator is going to be the square root of the real part squared, which is 1 squared, and then the thing that multiplies j, which is omega rc. The angle is going to be the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator, but the angle of the numerator is the arctangent of the imaginary divided by the real, but the imaginary is zero, so it's just equal to zero degrees. For the denominator, the imaginary term is omega rc divided by one is the real, at the arctangent of omega rc. The final angle is the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator. Now, obviously these both vary with frequency. Well, plotting these on a linear scale might be very difficult to interpret because we look at very wide changes in frequency. For example, the audio band is 2 pi 20 hertz, to 2 pi 20 kilohertz. If we look at AM radio, we're looking at things that are in the megahertz range. For FM radio, things in the 100 megahertz range. So a linear scale just isn't going to work well. What we're going to do is actually use a log scale, log base 10, for our x-axis. We'll also do something similar for the y-axis, because we have a large change in the ratio of the output to the input versus frequency. We're going to plot the magnitude and the angle versus frequency in a thing that's called a Bode plot. This is a graph we're going to plot 20 log of the magnitude of the ratio of the output to the input, and then plot the angle of the output to the input versus frequency. But the frequency is going to be a log scale, either log base 10 of omega or log base 10 of f, since we normally think about things in hertz and not in radians per second. 
It's named after Heinrich Bode. He was a mathematician at Bell Telephone Labs. He came up with a technique for sketching large changes in frequency by just using some simple straight line segments. And the answers are fairly close without computing the numerical values specifically. We're going to plot the magnitude by multiplying the log base 10 of that ratio times 20. And that's called a decibel or just dB. This is a consequence of a definition called a bell, named after Alexander Graham Bell, which is the log base 10 of power out over power in. Usually this is a pretty small number, so they multiply it by 10, and then this is called a decibel, where deci means 10 in Latin. So you get 10 times the log base 10 of power over power in. But power is related to v squared over r. You can bring that 2 out in front, and that's where the 20 comes from. This is just a definition that everyone else uses, so we're just going to follow the same notation. Let's sketch the magnitude of our transfer function versus omega. Here's our transfer function. It was equal to this expression right here. And now we're going to multiply that by 20 log. Now when you have a ratio of two terms, it's the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. We have 20 times log base 10 of 1 minus 20 log base 10 of this denominator square root of 1 plus the quantity omega rc squared. 20 log base 10 of 1 is 0. So I just have this term right here. Let me replace r times c by 1 over rc. So I could write this quantity here as omega over omega c. We're solving a specific problem, but actually we can do this in general for any circuit that has this form of solution. There are opium circuits that look like low-pass filters and inductor circuits and so on. We're going to derive the form of the Bode plot based on this, although we're looking at a specific example. I can see in this expression that it depends on the ratio of the actual frequency to a constant. If I pick omega equals omega c, I have the square root of 2, and 20 log of that is a minus 3.01 dB. If I make omega equal to 10 times omega c, this becomes just 10 squared plus 1, and 20 log of that's about minus 20.04 dB, and so on for 100 is minus 40.0004 dB, 0.1 minus 0.043 dB, and then 0.01 a minus 0.0004 dB. And this dotted line is the actual curve. What Bode realized is that this curve, although there's an infinite number of points here, although we just did a few, could be approximated with two straight lines. One with a slope here of 0 dB per decade and a slope here of minus 20 dB per decade. Because you can see here as we change by a decade, we're changing by the factor of 20. Here's my value of omega c. And again, just doing this generically so they can put in whatever omega c turns out. It could be 2 pi 1 kilohertz, it could be 2 pi 1 megahertz, it could be 2 pi 1 gigahertz. But it'd be the same shape of the curve. We can approximate this equation with two straight lines. It allows us to pick off points without actually calculating this formula like we did in chapter 4. There's some real common numbers that it's worth remembering. If you have a gain of 1, that's 0 dB. If you have a gain of 10, it's 20 dB. If you have a gain of 100, it's 40 dB. If you have a gain of 1,000, it's 60 dB. Since 1 tenth is 10 to the minus 1, we just change the sign on these. A gain of 1 tenth is minus 20 dB. A gain of 1 100 is minus 40 dB. A gain of 1 1,000 is minus 60 dB. We revolve around 0 dB. That's a gain of 1. What I want to point out next is some observations about the circuit and the Bode plot, which allow us to interpret what's going on in both. Let's go back and look at the Bode plot on the previous page. As the frequency gets lower and lower, and on a log scale we never get to 0. We just get factors of 10 smaller. We're approaching 0 or approaching infinity. But as we approach 0, the gain is approaching 0 dB, which is a gain of 1. So in other words, the output equals the input. As the frequency gets higher and higher relative to omega c, we get more and more negative dB. 20 log of 0 is minus infinity dB. What we're saying here is that as the frequency gets higher and higher, my output signal gets smaller and smaller. What we're doing is we're letting low frequencies pass, and we're blocking higher frequencies relative to omega c. Let's look at the circuit and see if it does the same thing. When the frequency gets lower and lower, the impedance of this capacitor, which is 1 over j omega c, or the magnitude is just 1 over omega c, gets larger and larger and larger because it's a reciprocal of omega. As we approach zero frequency, this becomes an open circuit, just like we did in our chapter 5 analysis of a capacitor. If this is an open circuit, no current flows, and the drop across this resistor would then be 0 times r, and that means that the rise in voltage equals the drop of 0 plus v out. In other words, v out equals v in. The body plot's telling that, but also the circuit if we interpret the impedance of the capacitor as we vary frequency. Let's look at the other extreme. Suppose that we're approaching infinite frequency. We don't have to really go that high. But relative to omega c, if we're much, much higher than that, the impedance of this capacitor is, again, 1 over j omega c, magnitude of 1 over omega c, and that gets smaller and smaller as frequency goes up. 
if you were to let the frequency go to infinity, this would become a short circuit, and the output would be equal to zero. And we're seeing that. As the frequency increases, this gets smaller and smaller because we're forming a voltage divider with a small impedance over the sum of the two. Let's go back to page five. And take a look at the angle versus frequency. We had previously that the ratio of the output to the input for the phase angle was minus the arctangent of omega over omega c, where omega c in this particular example was one over rc, but this could be other examples where we put it in the same form. Here again, too, I'm going to evaluate this equation for different values of the ratio of omega to omega c. So if I were to pick omega to equal omega c, I'd have the arctangent of 1, but it's a minus. The arctangent of 1 is 45 degrees, so that's minus 45 degrees. If I put omega equal to 10 omega c, I have the arctangent of 10. That turns out to be a minus 84.3. The minus the arctangent of 100 is a minus 89.4. If I were to go at 1 tenth, it's a minus 5.7, and 1 one hundredth, it's 0.57. Plotting that actual curve is this dotted line here. We've already realized that there's just really three things that are happening here. As you approach low frequencies, the angle is approaching zero. As you go higher in frequency, it approaches minus 90. And then right at the center, at omega c, it's equal to minus 45. So we just took three straight line segments, found omega c, Back a decade, go forward a decade, you're going to drop 90 degrees. So it's a minus 45 degrees per decade. Zero degrees per decade, and here it's zero degrees per decade. It's a quick sketch, and then you can just read a point off of here. It's not the actual value, but pretty close to it. It's a little bit of departure over here and over here, but it's much faster than trying to compute those things we did in chapter four. We're just doing one frequency. We have hundreds here that we could take a look at very quickly. Knowing the value of omega c, in this particular case, it's equal to 1 over RC, we can make a quick sketch of our results. And lastly, the general form of a low-pass filter is 1 over 1 plus J omega over omega C. Where omega C is whatever your circuit turns out to be. And again, this could be an op-amp circuit, it could be an inductor circuit. Lots of different kinds of low-pass filters. And this is an introduction to sinusoidal frequency response in a low-pass filter.